Here and I haven't slept a wink all night. There it is again. It sounds like a xylophone. Whatever it is, I don't like it. McNose, was that you making all that noise? No, sir. Uh, maybe it's your Uncle Mosby. <laughs> What's he doing here? My Uncle Mosby was shot in the Civil War. You know that. I know he was a band leader, too, and he still makes music. <laughs> it's unfair to the rest of the family. When a man is gone, he ought to stay in the graveyard of where he belongs. Oh. Are you sure your Uncle Mosby was shot? That's what we always thought. All right, get down in here. what I thought it was all the time. That's why you slept last night in the lawn? What kept you out there? Uncle Mosby. you'll find this a very, very nice, quiet little place. Constabule of the village idiot. I'm the Constabule. During the Civil War, Stonewall Jackson presented those to my Uncle Mosby. For being the best xylophone player. Yeah. Bandmaster. All I ever heard was a xylophone. You take care of the inventory. I'll give the family history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the price on these? The pair is listed at $2,000. <laughs> Look at the workmanship, inlaid with silver. $2,000, very, very reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Miss Smith, this is a business meeting. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. Sorry, nothing. But... <clears throat> Think of the history of those things. Originally brought over by General Lafayette to George Washington. <laughs> George Washington gave him to his son, and his son gave him to his son. <laughs> they... Look. 
Go sit down, please. Go sit down somewhere, please. The son gave him the stone wall I feared. The, the, no, the, the father. The, no, the... Well, anyway, my Uncle Mosby got them. Really, I hate to let go of them. <coughs> oh, oh, that's a shame. Had them for 70 years. There wasn't a scratch on them. This will come out of your salary. <laughs> Constable! Thanks. My Uncle Mosby knew this. He'd probably turn right over in his grave. <laughs> Shut up, shut up! Shut up, shut up! Shut up. It's the dinner is served. Yeah. Take the guests to dinner. Take them to dinner, Miss. This is a lovely dinner. Thanks. <laughs> Martin, I like this place. Oh, you know, I went to after a party one time. Yeah, time it went after a good night fest, Miss Cummings, I'm sure you... I a you know, little thing like that right in the head. Oh, saying, uh, Miss Cummings, you know, after a good night... They all started laughing like, oh, you know how they go. And then oh, they can go right... Huh? Please. Well, it's coming, well, tell me. I said please. <laughs> Where was I? After a good night, please. Yeah. <clears throat> After a good night's rest here, Mr. Cummings, I know you're just gonna love this place. You know. Mice in the attic. Did you set those mice traps? Yeah, eight of them. You'll never catch what's playing that with a mouse trap. Uh, you see, uh, my Uncle Mosby was a great musician in the Civil War. After he died, he left a lot of his instruments up there, see? <laughs> left them? He's up there with them. And, uh, you know, the, the mice, you know, they hop all over them and uh, they got a cute, eh? Uh. <laughs> How strange. Oh, I don't know. You know, they... Those are mice that should be in vaudeville. Oh, they're good. You ought to hear them play Betty and Paul. <laughs> and you say the 300 acres goes with the house? Uh, yes, that's right, Mr. Cummings. That's a lot of oil property. Uh, I mean, Earl, that's good property. <laughs> say, in the morning, I'll show you the finest grove of pines you ever saw. <laughs> say. What's that? <laughs> Don't you like to hear the whiff window through the pines? <laughs> Sounds kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, can't you look out for that cigarette? You... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, my foot. It has a restful atmosphere. Yes. Wouldn't your uncle be surprised if you came back today? <laughs> they, they never come back. Once they're gone, they're uh, supposed to stay away.
What is it? I don't know. It's up to you to shut it out. It's your house. Take your gun. <clears throat> it doesn't look like Uncle Mosby. <clears throat> Why didn't he answer that door? The big coward. I'll answer it myself. <laughs> 